Hello again, everybody. My name is Nathan Armand Frost. Welcome back to episode reviews for The Walking Dead. That is right, everybody. We have been doing episode reviews for Fear the Walking Dead the past uh, about six weeks now. And uh, obviously, Fear the Walking Dead has ended. The season finale has aired. And now we're on to the season premiere of The Walking Dead. That is right, everybody. That aired yesterday, last night, October the 11th. Uh, for those of you in the UK, I do apologize, but this obviously will contain spoilers. If you guys have not seen the episode yet, do not watch this. Uh, spoilers. That I'm just warning you right now. Do not watch this. It's it's pretty self-explanatory. Episode aired yesterday. If you haven't seen it or it hasn't aired yet for you, because I know some people in the UK over on that side of the world has not gotten it yet. I know it airs on Monday, I believe, and then some places it airs on Friday, I believe, as well. So... Fridays really suck for you guys. That's like an extra, almost an extra week. But anywho, uh, moving on, everybody. That is right. So, the season premiere of The Walking Dead. This is season six, episode one, entitled First Time Again. Uh, this episode, just to state right off the bat, was fucking insane. Straight up. For a season premiere, remember, keep in mind, this was a 90-minute episode 90 minute season premiere. Uh, this episode was absolutely insane. I really did enjoy every single minute of it. And man, I'm, I'm just saying it, it's great to be back with The Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead was good. This is like this one episode. Man, I don't even know. I, I can't even explain to you guys. It really was. It was just so, so good. Well written. Uh, it just everything played into it. Uh, the scale of it was just massive. It was insane, the amount of walkers that we've seen in, like, the first couple scenes of the episode, not just the first couple minutes or, you know, ten minutes, stuff like that. Literally seconds into the episode, we've seen a horde of walkers, most likely bigger than we've ever seen before on The Walking Dead, and that's saying something, because if you remember back in season four, I believe it was episode three, we've seen a pretty big horde of walkers in a field where, uh, you know, Daryl, Michonne, Tyrese, and I think Bob... Uh, all went on a run to a veterinary college to get supplies for the people that were sick back at the prison. Well, that horde that we ran into was massive at the time. We thought it was insane. It blew our minds. This? This is fucking unreal. So, to start things off, um, let me just break it down to you in a sense that there are two different aspects to this episode. There's the past, and there's the present. The past is showcased uh, in a way that is so, so cool. Something we haven't seen before in The Walking Dead, uh, or at least the TV show. We've seen it in the comic books, because that's what the comic books are. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about it being black and white. That is right, everybody. It is really, really cool. It was very, very nice and really, really, really cool to see it in black and white, because it just it throws you back to the comic books if you have ever read it. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything that happens in the comic books, because there are different aspects of the comic books that don't appear in the TV show, there's different things in the TV show that don't appear in the comic books. I'm not going to spoil anything. They're two different joy rides. I do really recommend the comic books, though, if you guys are really into The Walking Dead. Definitely check it out. It's it's definitely well worth the read, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so anyway, moving on. The past showcased in black and white. The present showcased basically in, uh, you know, in, in color, in, in normal fashion. So the past... By meaning the past, I'm not talking a long-ass time ago. I'm talking the present of the se season finale of season five. You know what I mean? Just where they picked up, uh, you know, on the on the deathly meeting, basically, where uh, Reg died and Rick killed Jesse. Or not Jesse. Definitely not Jesse. Uh, Pete, I believe, is what his name was. Uh, Porch Dick, <laughs> as they called him in Talking Dead, which still cracks me up. Um, so, yeah. Everything from when Rick met Morgan there um, to the part where they go outside and they try to control this herd of walkers that we currently find out about is the only reason that anybody in Alexandria has not died yet. You know what I mean? That's that's the reason Alexandria is so safe. And they changed it up in the way uh, from the comic books. Because in the comic books, in my opinion, they improved it for the TV show. Because in the comic books... You get to Alexandria, and you don't understand, because no one in Alexandria has ever killed a walker. They never had to defend themselves from, like, anything, a horde or anything like that. And, you know, we're left with constantly wondering why. You know what I mean? Like, why has this place been untouched? It doesn't really make sense, uh, but you learn to accept it. In the TV show, on the other hand, 
there's a giant quarry. That is right, everybody. There's a giant, giant quarry uh, with, I don't even know, thousands of walkers. Thousands. It must have been a shit ton of work in order to make it. I know that there was some CGI and stuff like that, um, you know, complete computer-generated images uh, of walkers put into the background, but they did not do all of them. You know what I mean? They, they at least made, I'd say, a good 2,000 walkers, which, uh, you know, plays into the fact that that's probably why we didn't see too many walkers on Fear the Walking Dead, as Trev said, another reviewer here on YouTube, uh, Trev's channel. I don't know if you guys know him or not, or I don't know if you guys watch his videos, but if so, uh, I definitely recommend you guys go watch him. Uh, I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description. He doesn't know me or anything like that, so it's not like a, a dual promotion thing, but I just, I, I'll, I'll recommend you to him, honestly. He's a great reviewer. Uh, he goes really in-depth with these reviews and stuff like that. He talks about a bunch of things that I want to start getting my hands on as well. Uh, but I have a lot of time going into, you know, the video game part of my channel and stuff like that. So that's why I really don't get into them very, very, very much other than my predictions and my review videos that air on Mondays and Thursdays. So anywho, moving on from that, like I said, this quarry is massive, uh, and walkers have been basically flooding into this quarry. Uh, and that's where they've been. You know what I mean? That's where, that's why Alexandria is completely untouched because, they're constantly, you know, hearing the noise of the walkers already in the quarry, and then they're hitting towards the quarry. You know, that's how they get enclosed in there, and, well, that's why Alexandria and every place like that has just pretty much remained untouched, because they're in the quarry. But, shit's about to go down, because this quarry is not safe anymore. Uh, there's trucks up there to keep the walkers from getting out. They don't look too great. Uh, there are walkers slipping through. And the more that slip through, the more those trucks are going to be, you know, off staggered and stuff like that. And, you know, they're about to fall off the quarry, basically. And it's going to be really, really bad. Because if you have a horde of that size directly going for Alexandria, it's it's not going to be good. I'll tell you that. It, it's just not going to be good. Um, okay, so, to start things off, basically, in the present, Rick's group in the Alexandria stand beside a quarry filled with walkers, the quarry exits basically are being blocked by several large trucks, like I said, I'm going to sort of a recap now, if you will, of certain parts of the episode, I'm not going to go over the whole thing, because like I said, it was an hour and a half long, and I'm not going to sit here and talk about it for that long, I'm going to go over some important parts, I'm going to leave out some other parts, uh, Rick basically, in a nutshell, is outlining a plan to herd the walkers away. Uh, the teetering truck trucks ba basically plummets to the ground. You know, his predictions coming true. You know, things are going to fall. Things are going to be bad. The walkers are going to get through. And anyway, in the quarry, one of the truck plummets to the ground, unleashing the walkers. Uh, Rick basically, who has been basically orchestrating this plan, um, a dry run, if you will, uh... It was supposed to be just to, like, you know, scout it, just to, you know, get the plan, you know, ready and everything like that for a future date. Well, basically, they're going to put the plan into action now. Because if they don't, well, it's uh, it's not going to be good. So, in a flashback now, um, basically to the moments following the, the meeting, everything like this. This is in black and white. Uh, Deanna, she, she actually sits by a campfire, basically mourning her husband, you know, Reg, that actually died, unfortunately, at the hands of Pete, uh, the psycho. Uh, she basically sits down, and Father Gabriel goes up to her, and she just says, you were wrong, basically referring to his warning that Rick's group was dangerous. Because if you remember back in Season 5, uh, Father Gabriel was a huge asshole, you know what I mean? He, he told... Deanna, that, you know, Rick's group, they're dangerous, they're not good people, uh, stuff like this, and it made Deanna doubt Rick and his group, you know what I mean? Obviously, that's not the case now. Uh, she basically says outright to him, you know, you were wrong, and he says, I know. I think Gabriel's starting to turn over a new leaf, and I'm glad of it, because uh, I, do, I do like his character, but at the same time, it's more of an annoyance. Uh, but if he does you know, turn over a new leaf and become, you know, an actual, uh, you know, sort of good thing for the group, you know, maybe he'll just be another person, uh, it's not bad, it's definitely not going to be bad, so I I'm hoping, I'm hoping that comes to fruition, 
Uh, Abraham now, meanwhile, carries Pete's body in a tarp. Uh, he takes a swig of liquor, then pours out, pours some out, basically, onto his corpse. Uh, back at the infirmary now, Rosita tends to tear. The reason why I'm going over this parts, these parts, like, in so much detail is because these parts are sort of important. Are important? Important. <laughs> Rosita now tends to Terra, obviously, uh, who have just come out of her coma that she was in from getting hurt back on the run with Glenn uh, and everybody like that. Uh, Glenn and Nicholas stagger in, bloody from their fight in the woods, you know, when Nicholas actually tried to kill Glenn. Um, and then Glenn took him back anyway, kind of brushing it off, you know, because if, if, if he told anybody about it, Nick would be exiled from the community. And as, you know, dangerous as Nicholas could be, Glenn still has hope for him. Glenn's a really good man. Uh, he has hope for like a lot of people and he feels like he can fix people. And that's what he's going to try to do with Nicholas. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that comes into a, you know, a good idea. Uh, a little later, I suppose. So, anyway, they stagger in, bloody from the fight in the woods. Glenn tells Maggie that they were attacked by walkers, omitting that the fact, omitting the fact that basically Nicholas ambushed him, tried to kill him, stuff like that. So, uh, skip to a part where basically Carl is sitting with a need on a dock. Uh, she holds his hand, and Ron really creepily, secretly watches. I'm sorry for my dog barking. I really do apologize for that. Uh, they usually do piss me off a lot, and they're probably going to piss me off again right now, because that's pretty fucking annoying, especially when I'm trying to do a review. But you know what? You gotta take the uh, the best you can get, I suppose. So, can't really do too much about it. The door's closed. I don't have any other option, honestly. So, anywho. Rick now warns Morgan that he no longer takes chances, implying that they'll be taking some precautionary measures with Morgan, stuff like that. You know, I don't really... You know, I, as as much as I know you, I don't really know you know you. Uh, you know, it's been a while, basically. Things in this world could have changed you. Even though you're a friend, uh, you know, we have to take some precautions. And uh, Morgan basically understands. You know what I mean? He's He's been in this world for quite some time, and he totally understands. All right, so back in the present now, uh, Darrow on his motorcycle is now hurting basically the quarry walkers uh, down a road line bumper to bumper with uh, cars, with Sasha and uh, Abraham, who's actually in a car with him. Uh, so yeah, he's leading a herd, everything like that, that's his job, we'll get more into that. Uh, back in the past now, Rick learns about the, quote, W man, end quote, uh, from Morgan and tells Darrow that they should be basically beef up security, you know, there's dangers out there, there's people out there with a, you know, you know they're, they're really dangerous. Uh, Daryl basically disagrees with Rick's plan to stop recruiting new people uh, into the community. Rick basically wants to stop recruiting people, but, you know, Daryl, the reason why he disagrees with it is because that's kind of his job, you know what I mean? He found his worth in the community for going out with Aaron and recruiting these people. And uh, now Rick thinks that they shouldn't do that. There is dangers out there. Uh, it, it does make sense in a way, especially with the wolves lurking. Obviously, they don't know anything about the wolves, but if they did, you know, there would be no question about it. They should definitely stop, or at least for now, you know, uh, until they get rid of these this new threat and stuff like that. So, uh, sorry, has some things on my glasses there. I apologize if that was annoying mildly. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, yeah, he, he disagrees with it. Basically, in the past, uh, obviously, that being in black and white. In the present now, Sasha and Abraham drive a car, uh, basically, to a rendezvous point uh, marked with red balloons. Uh, Daryl informs them via walkie-talkie that he's bringing the herd to their position. All right, so now, back in the past, Rick visits Morgan in the unfinished townhouse where he basically was detained uh, following his fight with Pete. Um... Alexandria's unofficial holding cell, if you will. Um, Rick apologizes for holding Morgan, but Morgan acknowledges the need for precaution. You know, I understand why you're doing it, and you shouldn't take chances, basically. You know what I mean? And I'm glad that Morgan... I'm glad that Morgan knows this. You know what I mean? I'm glad he doesn't take it personally or anything like that. And I'm glad that he just... Uh, I'm glad that he sort of, you know knows in a way 
that this is, you know, if anything, what should be done in terms of, you know, keeping everybody safe and everything like that. It assures them basically that the place that he's in, Alexandria, is going to be a safe place. You know what I mean? They don't just let any old person in there. They don't let, even even if they know the person from before, like Rick No and Morgan. I'm glad that they uh, they take chances, or they don't take chances, rather, if you will. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, while guarding the gate now, Eugene lets in three Alexandrias. This is where we first get to meet Heath, which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, really, really cool character from the comic book. I'm glad he's finally making an appearance in the TV show. Uh, I kind of saw it coming from a mile away. Obviously, they got to Alexandria, so he was gonna, he, it was going to be pretty damn soon. So, anyway, yeah, Heath. Um, there's two other characters as well, Scott and Annie. They're not really important. You know what I mean? They don't really have any significance, if you will. Uh, but they've all been on a supply run uh, for the past few weeks. So, yeah. that That's why they weren't basically there. So they've been on a supply run for the past few weeks. Uh, we did see Heath briefly in the opening scenes where they were, you know, at the quarry in the present time. But obviously that's the present time. That's probably why we see him. And Heath, the first time we actually get to meet, you know, what his name is, stuff like that, uh, it's in the past. It's in black and white. And like I said, it was very iconic. I thought it was a really cool uh, way to do it is to put it in black and white because it just, I don't know, it really made a comic book feel to it, you know what I mean? And for anybody who has actually read the comic books, it was definitely very, very cool. Uh, and I want to know what you guys thought of the old black and white scenes and stuff like that. Did you guys like it? Because I think at some points it actually made the episode. It was really, really cool. I really did enjoy it. Now, I'm not saying I want black and white, you know, every episode all the time, just representing the past. Uh, you know, obviously, I guess that would be cool in a way, but at the same time, they're not always going to have, you know, episodes that quickly switch between past and present so you know they, they won't they won't need to distinguish the two timelines all the time basically if you know what i mean uh so yeah anyway if, if they do it once in a while it would definitely bring a cool feeling to the show uh so i, I i'm 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 curious to see what they'll basically do with the whole black and white and one if they'll keep it for past times and stuff like that i think that'd be definitely cool so hopefully they do i think that'd be cool as shit um so yeah, Rick and Morgan load Pete's body into a car. They're basically going out. Uh, they're not going to bury him. Uh, they don't bury, you know, killers inside the walls, stuff like that. Deanna agrees. So they bring him outside the walls. Uh, they load Pete's body into a car. Morgan points out that Rick could have imprisoned Pete instead of killing him. And Rick argues basically that Pete was a murderer. You know, he's a killer. Morgan counters saying basically, you know, I'm a killer, Rick, and so are you. Uh, which is totally a valid point. Totally, totally a valid point. It makes complete sense, and I completely agree with Morgan. Uh, so he, they could have imprisoned Pete, but at the same time, he's just a danger to the community. And Rick doesn't know the whole, you know, prison thing anymore. Like, he doesn't really he doesn't really believe in it. You know, if somebody is a danger, he wants to kill them, basically. Not just, you know, put them in a prison or, you know lock them up, if you will. He wants to kill him. He just wants to completely get rid of the threat once and for all. He doesn't believe in kind of like a rehabilitation uh, process or anything like that. I understand Rick's point of view, but at the same time, Morgan's point of view is definitely valid as well. And if it goes anything according to the comic books, again, no spoilers, but Rick will eventually see it that way as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, Okay, so now, back in the present, Rick, Michonne, and Morgan arrive at the rendezvous point with yellow balloons. Uh, Glenn tells them via walkie that he is almost basically at his destination. Uh, back in the past now, Ron uh, or secretly follows Rick and Morgan uh, to Pete's burial site. Like I said, this goes back and forth. It's kind of confusing, but I'm just going to go th through it in like a sequence. Uh, I'm not going to skip it all around to where I'm doing past first and then present. I'm just going to do a sequence, uh, and that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys won't mind it. Like I said, I'm not going to go over everything, so don't worry about that. I won't get too confusing. Uh, I'm just going to go over some important parts, things that we've seen in the trailer, stuff like this. This part, in particular, something we've seen in the trailer. So, he secretly follows Rick and Morgan to Pete's burial site, where they discover a nearby quarry filled with walkers. This is where they first discovered the quarry with walkers. This is in the past. This is black and white, just to remind you guys. So, this is where they first discovered the, the quarry with the walkers and everything like that. Um... Ron and Ron is now discovered basically uh, by Rick and Morgan, 
and he starts running away, uh, and he's almost attacked by walkers, and Rick and Morgan basically have to rescue him. So this is the part in the trailer. In the trailer, though, this was colored. You know, that's why it was a bit weird. Um, you know, it was actually, like, there was no black and white parts in the trailer. And we've seen a lot of the scenes in the trailer in the TV show, but they were black and white. So they obviously came up with the idea to put the past scenes in black and white. You know what I mean? That That's obviously what they did. Uh as opposed to, you know, keeping everything in color and then trying to distinguish from there which scenes were past and which scenes were present. Which I totally understand why they did the whole black and white thing. Because it, it was it, it would be hard to distinguish, I think, in my opinion, what scenes were present and what scenes were past if they didn't have some sort of a distinguishable uh, effect, basically, to both parts. And I'm glad they definitely went with the black and white. Again, to reiterate it, on a, on a multi-scale. You know what I mean? I said it so many times now. Uh, but anyway, moving on. So they save him. Uh, basically, this is where Rick actually runs and tackles him uh, from, you know, falling off the edge of the quarry. Uh, some of the walkers go off. You know, they shoot a couple others. Morgan takes care of a couple. Um, yeah, okay. So Rick and Morgan now basically deduce, or they, they come up with the idea that the quarry has basically been trapping all the walkers inside the area, which is why Alexandria has been so safe. You know, there's been no walkers coming to Alexandria. There's no been no whores because they've all been led to this quarry by the sounds of the other walkers. You know, they all followed the sounds, and they all ended up in the quarry, and that's why Alexandria has been so safe. That's why people have not had to kill walkers. Uh, and we find out later that, literally, they have not had to kill walkers. There was a few people that literally didn't know what to do when it came to walkers, you know, coming by and starting to attack. People literally from Alexandria did not know how to handle themselves, uh, which... We can assume at this point that it's about two, two and a half years to three years into the apocalypse. And to be a person in that apocalypse that far in without actually having to kill a walker is pretty damn insane. But now, since the quarry has been so full, you know, it's obviously eventually going to break. And as we find out in the present, it did. You know, the trucks fell over, they started to escape, they had to put the plane into action right then and there. Um, you know, that's why people in Alexandria have not had to defend themselves against walkers. That's why they've been so sheltered, that's why they've been so protected. And while that's good, that they've been protected, it's bad on the other hand. They don't know how to handle themselves around walkers, and something like Alexandria, let's be honest, as, as good as it is, it's not going to last forever. Something's eventually going to come by... And the walls are going to be taken down. There's going to be walkers that are going to be attacking, which, by the way, doesn't really look good for the next episode. Uh, we'll get into that. No spoilers or anything like that. I haven't seen any of the uh, uh, any of the next episode. I've seen some sneak peeks and some preview stuff like that. We'll go over that in the episode prediction video coming up this Thursday, uh, October the 15th. So definitely look forward to that. Um, so, yeah, they basically, you know, they save Ron. He tries to leave. Rick sternly warns him that he will die if he wanders around alone. You're coming home with us right now. Uh, so back in the present now, Glenn, Nicholas, and Heath arrive at a tractor store located on the Walker Herd route. Uh, basically, the, the route that they're taking with the herd um, to lead them basically all the way from the quarry and lead them past Alexandria and just somewhere else. You know what I mean? They don't they won't want them in the quarry anymore. Uh but at the same time, obviously, they don't want him to go in towards Alexandria. So they've planned out this entire route, basically, that they're taking to gradually lead the walkers on a road and, you know, sort of get them, sort of get them to safety. But obviously not for the walkers' safety, for Alexandria's safety and stuff like that. So that's their plan. They want to lead them out of the quarry and somewhere else where they won't actually be able to, you know, hurt anybody or take down the walls of Alexandria. Very good plan. Uh, by the end of it, still a very good plan. Brilliant execution. Something went a little wrong, though. <laughs> and again, I know I'm hinting towards some things, but we'll we'll get into it. So, yeah. In the present, they go to a tractor store, basically. Glenn devises a plan to kill the walkers inside so their noise won't draw the oncoming herd off course. Because, you know, obviously if the walkers... You know, if they go on the the road past this tractor store, there's walkers inside the tractor store. They were constantly banging on the windows and everything like this. 
and you know growling things like that obviously that'll attract the walkers off the path and you know that it won't be good you know what i mean so they have to take care of that noise before the walkers basically come so that the walkers stay on path stay on route and just keep going keep going straight that's what they want to do so uh yeah that's what they do there they they devise it a plan uh, in the past now, Rick presides over a community meeting basically to propose hand, uh, herding the Cory Walkers away before they break free and attack Alexandria. Uh, he basically now is assembling a team of volunteers. This is where he's basically getting the whole plan together in the past. We've already seen him start to execute it in the present, uh, but this is where he's getting the plan together. This is where he's thinking about it. This is where, you know, he's asking people if they want to help. Uh, anyway, he's assembling a team of volunteers. Sasha says that she'll help Dara lead the walkers away, and Abraham quickly offers to join her so that she isn't alone. Uh, Glenn will help, but Maggie decides to stay back in Alexandria to keep an eye on things, especially Deanna. Uh, Nick volunteers to help despite Glenn's, despite Glenn's look of disapproval, basically saying, you know, you're not ready yet. You've gotten people killed. You try to kill me. Uh, but... Nicholas wants to help in order to prove his worth, basically saying, you know, he's not a bad person anymore. Uh, you know, he's come over that. He wants to help. He wants to be, you know, a person to this community. He wants to, he wants to help it along, basically. You know, he's, he's done some bad things in the past, but he wants to basically make it right in a way. So, yeah, Deanna uh, basically squashes the protest from Carter, which is another one of the Alexandrians. Uh, and gives basically the plan, her blessing, you know, saying, this is what we're going to do. This is Rick's plan. We're going to follow it. And uh, Carter is one that doesn't think it's a good idea. You know, this was the guy in the comment, or this was the guy in the trailer for season six, basically saying, you know, we're all just supposed to fall in line behind you and just, you know, do as we're told. You know what I mean? Uh, this is the guy that was basically constantly questioning Rick. And, well, we almost get to see him die. Uh, and then, you know, we, we kind of do, uh, un <laughs> again, spoilers. Um, so yeah, Mick, Rick, Mick, I almost said Mick, but the next word is, you know, starts with an M. So that's why it kind of, anywho, uh, Rick basically meets with his team now and devises a plan to herd the walkers, uh, west away from Alexandria. Uh, Eugene suggests that they build a wall at a key intersection to ensure none of the walkers split off and make their way to the community. Uh, Rick basically agrees and charges Carter, who worked on the wall construction crew, uh, with building it. You know, the, he, he's one of the guys that helped Reg build the wall around Alexandria, so obviously he's good. He's good at constructing things and stuff like that. Obviously, Reg was probably one with a big plan and everything like that, but he has some experience with it. So, as much as he doubts Rick, he, uh, he goes along with it. And he does it. So, back in the present now, Daryl leads a herd to the yellow rendezvous point at the key intersection. Walkers basically pinball against the newly erected wall uh, as basically they make their way around the bend. So, there's a right-hand turn, and then there's woods straight forward. So, some of the walkers obviously could have went straight into the woods, but they put up this wall leading around the corner, which is basically keeping them from going into the woods, and they have to follow this path. So, very brilliant idea by their by their group, by their team. Very, very brilliant. Um, Rick, Michonne, and Morgan basically are shooting flares uh, to keep the walkers marching west. Uh, you know, instead of just, you know, staying at the wall and everything like that. They're, they're, they're shooting flares, and, you know, obviously the walkers are seeing them up in the air. They decide to go towards them, and, you know, again, very, very great plan. They know how to deal with walkers. They know how to deal with herds of walkers, hordes, everything like that. They know how to, and I'm glad they do. I'm sure a lot of people are glad they do as well. In the past now, Rick's group and the Alexandria's residents basically are at the same place where the walkers were, uh, you know, going around the corner, but they're not actually going around the corner yet. Back in the past, they were building the wall, so we actually get to see the construction of the wall, and uh, yeah, it's very, very cool. So continuing their early conversation, Daryl tells Rick that recruiting new people is the only way to help the community thrive, basically. You know, we have to keep getting new people in, and, you know, this is how we build civilization back up. This could be good for us. Uh, back in the present now, Glenn formulates a new plan to kill the walkers inside the tractor shop because the door uh, that they were going to open was, again, sealed inside from actually a metal gate that came down. 
one of those security doors basically that they they put up to keep you know burglars and stuff like that from breaking in. Well, anyway, he devises a new plan. He tells Nicholas to stay on the sidelines and radio Rick if anything goes sh- if anything goes south, stuff like that. Uh, in the past, now at the wall construction site, Maggie reveals to Tara that Nicholas got Noah killed. Uh, and also tried to kill Glenn. Tara basically objects to Glenn's decision to help Nicholas rather than punish him. Uh, Maggie just points out that Glenn gave Tara a second chance after she sided with the governor against them. You know, you were you were one of those people on the other side of the fence, and now you're one of the closest people in my life to me. You know what I mean? Second chances are what it's kind of about. Obviously, Tara was on the governor's side of things when they attacked the prison. Now, obviously, Tara's with their group. She knew that she was wrong. And, uh, you know, she made things right eventually. And, you know, they're very, very close now, even though she was on the side of the governor, which obviously killed Maggie's father. So it doesn't really get any more personal than that. You know what I'm saying? So second chances are not impossible in this world. And that's why Glenn is such a good guy. That's why Glenn is giving Nicholas a second chance. And it seems to me that Nicholas has taken advantage of that second chance. And I'm glad that he has. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely see with him. You know, he could be he could be playing with us. Something like that. We don't, we don't really know. We'll get into that, though. Uh, what we think of predictions and stuff like that. Again, this Thursday. Uh, in the present now, Glenn breaks a window at the trailer store. And then, basically, basically with Heat's help, shoots the walkers as they pour out. Uh, instead of opening the door, they break the window. Uh, when they become overwhelmed, Nicholas steps in and helps kill the walkers. Again, proving his worth. <clears throat> um, back in the past now, Carol serves refreshments at the wall. She's kind of still playing her whole, uh, you know, nice grandmother type feel instead of the badass that we all know that she is. You know what I mean? She's she She's kind of keeping herself as a wild card. In a way, just in case anything goes south, they don't want to put all their eggs in one basket, so to speak. Uh, Morgan notes that Carol is constantly alert and asks basically if she used to be a cop like Rick. Uh, Carol basically unnerved, basically just thanks Morgan for the compliment, saying, you know, I'm not a cop or anything like that. Uh, I appreciate your compliment. So Morgan is definitely noticing her, even though she's playing, you know, this sweet, innocent old lady, stuff like that. Morgan knows. Morgan knows something's up with her. So we'll uh, we'll definitely see if that comes into play. Uh, Back in the present now, like I said, Abraham now is with uh, Sasha, you know, leading the walkers away with Daryl in a car. Um, Some of the walkers are basically getting off the path. You know, they're going into the woods. Abraham takes an unnecessary risk. Uh, he leaps out of the car to kill a few walkers that have strayed from the herd, and then he hops back in, basically exhilarated. You know, he put it in a way, I just grabbed the bull by the nuts. So, I guess, I don't know, that, that's his way he can he can stay alive, I suppose. I don't really know. Uh, back at the past now, at the wall construction site, Rick advises Deanna to start following firearms, or allowing fo- firearms within the community. Uh, walkers emerge from the woods and approach a group of Alexandrias. Overwhelmed, Carter asks for help. Uh, Rick stops his people from intervening and encourages the Alexandrias to basically defend themselves. You know what I'm saying? Go, go to, def- go, go defend yourselves. You know, take them out one by one. No guns. See if you can do this. They haven't taken down any walkers in the past, and they eventually have to learn. A very valid point, and I completely agree with Rick on this one. Basically, so, <clears throat> um, he encourages them, uh, but they're basically paralyzed with fear. Morgan jumps in and kills the walkers. And uh, Carter basically glares at Rick. Uh, Back at the armory now, Eugene, this is still in the past, by the way, uh, he overhears Carter urging Tobin, Spencer, and Francine to help him kill Rick. That is right, Carter's taking some some things into his own hands. Uh, Eugene is off around the corner overhearing this. Uh, so he overhears Carter, you know, like I said, urging him to help him kill Rick. Carter basically spots Eugene and is about to shoot him. Uh, when sort of Rick, Daryl, and Morgan kind of walk in and just see Carter holding Eugene at gunpoint, Rick's just like, uh, what's, what's going on here? And, uh, you know, he kind of plays it cool for a second and then attacks Carter, wrestles the gun from him, and, uh, is just about to execute him, has him on his knees, basically Carter's, it was just me, just shoot me, just kill me, and, uh, Rick basically pulls the gun up and just, you know, I'm good, 
hands the gun, hands the gun off to Morgan or Darrow, one of them at least, and uh, he really wanted to execute him, which we actually get to see that um, when he talks to Morgan a little later. Uh, but he didn't. He kind of controlled himself, and I'm very glad that he did. You know, even though Carter could have been a threat and everything like that, he's not really a threat. Let's be honest. Let, let's just be honest. He can uh, he can definitely again. He can be persuaded to change ways. He can definitely pers- be persuaded. So he decided not to execute him. Uh, in the present now, Rick Rick's team basically fans out to manage the herd. A walker attacks Carter, unfortunately, and bites him. Uh, Carter basically screams, drawing walkers off the road. Um, so yeah, Carter was trying to fan out uh, with Rick and everybody like that. Like he was completely team Rick at this point uh, in the present You know, he was all for Rick and everything like that. He was just following his lead. uh, And he was just trying to manage the herd that was on the street. And a walker was in a tree. uh, And an attack Carter bit him right on the face. So obviously there was nothing they could do, anything like that. And Carter's screaming, basically drawing the walkers off the road. The herd of walkers right off the road. And that's that's not good. So, uh, yeah, he he was just continued to scream. So in the past now, Rick invites Morgan to basically live with them in the house, you know, basically saying, we don't need to do this anymore. I know you, uh, you don't have to stay on your own anymore. Uh, Morgan tells Rick that he's still the same Rick he met at the beginning. You know, he knows this because Rick didn't kill Carter when he had the opportunity. Rick basically admits that he wanted to kill Carter, but he stopped himself because he realized that he didn't have to. And Rick just says, Somebody like that, referring to Carter, um, you know, they don't, des- they, they, they shouldn't be living at this point in life, uh, in this apocalypse, uh, in this world. Somebody like that, they're going to die no matter what. So that's really why he didn't execute him, because he just believes that no matter what, they're going to die. So they're going to die no matter what. Obviously, in the previous scene, uh, you know, Carter gets bit on the face. So, (laughs) you know, he's definitely not wrong. They're going to die no matter what. And, uh, well, since that was in the past, in the present, when Carter got attacked, obviously he predicted it. So they're going to die no matter what. In the present now, Rick basically gets to Carter, uh, you know, stabs the walker that bit him, um, and then basically tries to get Carter to basically stop screaming. But he can't get it to, he can't get him to stop screaming. So he just stabs him in the back of the head. He kills him. Uh, Again, it was what needed to be done. Uh, there's no way you can cut off the bite. It was on his cheek, you know, on, on his face. There was no way that he could have been saved or anything like that. And the only thing he's doing at that point is attracting walkers off the road, and that puts everybody in danger. So I completely understood why Rick stabbed Carter in the back of the head and put him out of his misery, and at the same time protected his group back at Alexandria. So he killed Carter. Um, Tobin now herds the stray walkers back onto the road. Um, Rick basically asks Morgan to return to Alexandria and update on every update on everyone, you know, what's going on, stuff like that. Uh, Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham continue leading the herd down the road. Uh, back in the past now, Rick runs into Jesse at the armory. Basically, Rick wants some flares in order for the next day. Uh, there's again, again, in the past, the flares that they were using to, you know, lead the herd of walkers continuing going west, stuff like that. Uh, He basically wants to teach Ron, you know, how to defend himself, stuff like that. And she says, you know, um, Rosita gave her a gun and she's going to teach him. So that's that's what's going to happen there so that she doesn't need Rick. Back in the present now, Rick and Michonne basically monitor the herd on the road. Uh, Now back in the past, again, constant switches. I do apologize for it. Uh, They're a little longer than just past, present, past, present, stuff like that. But, you know, that's kind of the gist. Uh, Rick brings everybody basically to the finish line where he instructs them to fall back while Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham escort the herd another 20 miles or so down the road. Uh, In private now, Abraham asks Sasha if she's going, if she's doing this because she still wants to die. Uh, This is in the past, by the way. Uh... So Abraham basically questions Sasha, you know, are you doing this? Do you want to be a part of this team because she wants to die? And she just straight up says, no, I think Sasha's honestly turned the cheek, you know, from what we've seen her in previous on season five. Uh, you know, we've we seen after Tyrese died, she she really didn't have the urge to live anymore. 
But it seems like, she, like I said, she's turning it around now and actually wanting to stay alive. So she says no, point blank. She's looking a lot better than what she did, I'll tell you that much. She looks uh, maybe not happy, go lucky, or anything like that, but she definitely doesn't look as depressed as she recently was. So the group finds a tractor store full of walkers, and Rick basically makes plans to clear it out later. This was the store that, you know, Glenn, uh, Heath, and Nicholas actually, you know, took out in the present. Uh, so yeah, they make plans to clear it out later after the dry run. Uh, Nick, uh, Glenn pulls Nicholas aside, basically tells him that he's not ready to go on such an important mission. Uh, Glenn promises that he'll help him in the future. Uh, Rick finally leads the team to the quarry moments before the truck topples off the cliff. Uh, that was still in the past. And to end the episode, guys, we're in the present. Uh, the walker herd reaches the finish line when a loud horn unexpectedly goes off in the distance. We don't know where this horn's coming from. It seems like it's coming from Alexandria. Uh, obviously, somebody's trying to sabotage their whole plan. Uh, basically, the walker's now drawn to the noise. They basically split off from the herd, off the road, uh, and into the forest, towards the horn. Where's this horn leading? Is the horn at Alexandria? Are the wolves basically ringing the dinner bell? We just don't know. We, we just don't know at this point. If I had to guess, it would be the wolves, you know, arriving at Alexandria and probably not there for fucking, you know, tea and crumpets, if you will. Uh, they're not there just to have fun and play cards with them. You know, they're, they're there for very, very dangerous reasons. And that's basically when the episode cuts, man. That's when the episode ends. That was an hour and a half. Uh, basically, while the front of the herd continues to fall, follow Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham, the back half of the herd veers off the road, uh, basically in a mass, and their new course is taking them right to Alexandria. So Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham still have a good chunk of the herd, uh, but like I said, that horn is leading a hell of a lot of them away and into the forest, and it do, it's not looking good. I can tell you that much. It's not looking good. But anyway, that was the episode, everybody. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy today's episode review video. I know it was a little longer than usual, and I do apologize for it, but it had to be done. It was an hour and a half episode, so I had to go over a lot of things. All in all, the episode out of a, let's say, a 10-star rating, I'd say about a 9.8. 9.9. Hell, I'd give it a fucking 10. You know what? I'll give it a 10. It was really, really good. Uh, an hour and a half long, 90-minute episode. Very, very worth it. Uh, I I don't know, man. It, it was really worth the six-month wait. And I cannot wait for the next episode of The Walking Dead. I cannot wait for it. My prediction video will be going up this uh, October the 15th on Thursday. Uh, season 6, Episode 2, entitled JSS. It's obviously an acronym for something. Not really sure what it would mean. But it's called JSS, so we'll get into that. Anyway, episode review for Season 6, Episode 1, the season premiere, entitled First Time Again. Really did enjoy the episode. Hopefully you guys did as well. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye for now, everybody.